We are starting with number 11 in this video. Uh, number 11 reads, if f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5 and g of x equals x plus 2, we are going to find each of the following. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find f plus g of x. So what that means is we are going to add f of x and g of x together. So we're going to have negative 3x squared plus 5, and we are going to add to that x plus 2. When we do that, our negative 3x squared does not have anything to combine with it. Um, our x also does not have any like term, and then we have our 5 and our 2. So we have negative 3x squared plus x plus 7. For our next one, we are subtracting. We have f of x minus g of x. And for this particular one, students often forget to distribute the negative to all of g of x. So it's actually negative 3x squared plus 5 minus x plus 2. So in order to simplify this, we have to have negative 3x squared plus 5, and then we distribute the negative. So we have negative x minus 2. So once we combine like terms here, we have negative 3x squared minus x plus 3. The next one we are multiplying, we have f times g of x. So that is going to be f of x times g of x. So we're going to take negative 3x squared plus 5, and we are going to multiply that times x plus 2, and we're going to FOIL. Um, so we'll do negative 3x squared times x. So we will have negative 3x to the third. Then we will do um, negative 3x squared times 2, so that will be negative 6x squared. Then we will have 5 times x, which is 5x, and then we will have 5 times 2, which is 10. And we want to make sure that there's no like terms that can be combined, um, and they're not, and so that is our final answer. The last one is F composed of, and sometimes we forget that. That right there means composed of. So what we are doing is we are taking G of X and we are plugging it in for the X in F of X, okay? So we are taking X plus two, we're taking X plus two, and we are plugging X plus two in for that X right there. Okay, so f composed of g of x. So we take x plus 2, which is our g of x, and we plug it in for the x in the f of x function. So we are going to have negative 3 times x plus 2 squared. Oh, yes, plus 5. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to FOIL x plus 2 times x plus 2. So x plus 2 squared is x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay, so when we do that, we end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. So now we're going to take that negative 3 and we've got to distribute that negative 3 across that trinomial. So we're going to have negative 3x squared minus 12x, minus 12. And then our last step here is going to combine those like terms. We have negative 12 and positive 5. So we have negative 3x squared, minus 12x, minus 7. And that is my final answer for f composed of g of x. Okay, so our next one um, we need to find the inverse of this function. And an inverse does exist because this is linear. 
Um, so there's several steps that we follow for inverse, and you did this on your project. So this is one that your project will be super helpful. Um, f of x, we're going to switch that out. And we're going to make that a y. So we have y equals 7x plus 4. That's our first step. Replace f of x with y. Our second step is to switch our x and our y. So we're going to have x equals 7y plus 4. Now, our next step is to solve for y. We're going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I'm left with x minus 4 equals 7y. I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And I get y equals x minus 4 over 7. And I can rewrite that and just switch the different sides. So I have y equals x minus 4 over 7. So that is the inverse of this. Okay, I didn't write the problem. Sorry, guys. Okay, just ignore everything I just said. Okay, I didn't multiply. Let's go back to this step right here because I was looking at that and I, I realized that I made a mistake there. So here we are. So when I switched, when I took my f of x and changed it with my y, um, I didn't write the full problem down. So I have y equals 7x plus 4 over 3. So I need to write 7x plus 4 over 3. Now my next step is to switch. So I have x equals 7y plus 4 over 3. Now I solve for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Okay, And when I do that, that those 3's cancel. So I'm left with 3x equals 7y plus 4. Now I subtract 4 from both sides. So I have 3x minus 4 equals 7y. I divide both sides by 7. And I'm left with y equals 3x minus 4 over 7. And my final step is to take the y and replace it with f inverse of x. And that is my final answer. So what happened um, earlier is I forgot to write down this divided by 3. And I apologize for that. I um, was kind of doing things too fast and I forgot to write that down. Um, so this is the correct answer right here. And that's why I always encourage you to make sure you have written the answer down correctly. So that sometimes comes back to haunt us. Okay, so number 13 says, put f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 14 in standard form. Then state the vertex and the direction of the parabola. Finally, graph the parabola. Okay, now um, we have been using standard form and vertex form. So if you're not sure which one we're doing, um, those two are kind of interchangeable, standard form and vertex form. So vertex form is where you have f of x equals a value x minus h squared plus k, okay? And h, k is the vertex of your parabola. So the way that we do this is we complete the square in order to do this. So I've got x squared minus 6x plus 14. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at that x squared minus 6x, and we're going to determine if there is a an integer that we need to pull out of both of those. So we've got to have a 1 in front of that x squared. Okay, when we start to put it in this form right here, we've got to have a 1 in front of it. Okay, so if there's anything in front of that x squared, you're going to need to pull that out and make that part of your a. Um, this particular one, we don't have to do that. So we've got f of x equals, and I've got x squared minus 6x plus 14. Now, I haven't changed the value at all. I've just taken those first two terms, the x squared minus 6x, 
and kept it inside some, some brackets. And then the plus 14 is going to be on the outside. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of negative 6. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. And negative 3 squared is 9. So I am going to add 9 right here. Okay, and I got 9 by taking half of negative 6 and then squaring it. Now, if I add 9 inside my brackets, I need to be sure I am subtracting 9 on the outside because we have to keep this balanced, and this is how we keep it balanced. Okay, so if I'm adding 9 on the inside, I've got to subtract 9 on the outside. Okay, so... Here we go. Now we're going to factor. We're going to factor x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we're going to have f of x equals x minus 3 squared. Okay, then we're simplifying the plus 14 and the minus 9. So then we're going to have plus 9. Or plus 5, I'm sorry. So um, because of this, we are able to say... Um, my vertex is 3, 5. The direction is up, okay? There is no negative right here. There's The, the number that's right there is 1, um, but, it, but it opens up because this right here is not negative, okay? Um, and so our, our direction of our parabola is going up. Now we are going to do a very, very rough sketch of this just to um, get an idea of what our parabola is going to look like. Now, we're going to go uh, positive 3, and we're going to go up 5. So our parabola is going to have a vertex of 3, 5, and it's going to open up. So that is what our parabola is going to look like. Okay? And because of this graph, we can also determine that our solutions to this quadratic would be complex. Because this parabola does not cross the x-axis, the solutions to this would be complex. Meaning we would have i in our, our solution. Now, we're not asked to find the solution. We're asked to find the vertex, the direction, and the graph. But if we were solving for zeros, if we were solving for where the graph crossed the x-axis, this graph does not cross the x-axis. And so our solutions would have complex solutions, which would have i in them. Okay. Um, number 14. We are solving, just like we talked about in number 13, we are solving for these solutions. And I think we can... Factor this, let's see, um, I have 5 and negative 2, so that's going to give me negative 10. So that's my product. Okay, my sum to this is going to be positive 3. Okay, and my numbers are going to be negative 2 and positive 5. Now, if you weren't able to identify this as... Um, something that could be factored because at first I wasn't thinking that this could be factored, but it can be factored. You can always use the quadratic formula. Okay, so you can always solve this using the quadratic formula, and that would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Okay, and I really thought that when I was looking at this, that that's what we we're going to have to do. So you do want to be sure you're comfortable with the quadratic formula for your test. Okay, so this would be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus, we've got negative 4 times 5 times negative 2. And so that's going to give me 40. It's going to give me positive 40. So negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 times negative 2 is positive 40. And that's all over 10. So that's going to be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 10. Okay. 
So then that simplifies to negative 3 plus or minus 7 over 10. You're not done. You've got to do negative 3 plus 7 over 10, and you've got to do negative 3 minus 7 over 10. Okay, so your answers to this are going to be 4 over 10, which is 2 fifths, and you're going to have negative 10 over 10, which is negative 1. Okay, so um, be prepared on your final to do at least one with the quadratic formula. Be prepared for that. Okay, um, but back to this one because you can factor it. So my numbers are negative 2 and positive 5. So I'm going to have 5x squared plus 5x minus 2x minus 2. I take a 5x out of the first two and I'm left with x plus 1. I take a negative 2 out of the second two and I get x plus 1. So I have 5x minus 2 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals 2 fifths or x equals negative 1. Okay. Now, for number 15, um, it says determine the end behavior in the zeros and their multiplicities of f of x equals negative x to the fourth plus 16x squared. Then use this information to draw a darn decent graph or sketch of the graph. Okay, so um, the first thing we can look at is that this is raised to the fourth power. Because it is an even power, we know that our graph is either going to, they're going to both open up, or, and we don't know what happens in the middle, or they're both going to open down. Okay, we don't know. But because of the fourth power, it's going to be one or the other. Now, because there's a negative one right here, a negative in front of that x to the fourth, we know that th that opening up is not an option. We know it's going to be opening to the bottom. So the end behavior of this graph is that it's going to open down. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. So we've got to find our zeros and our multiplicities. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative x squared. And when I do that, I'm left with x squared minus 16. Negative x squared and then x squared minus 16. That can even go a little bit further. So I've got x plus 4 and x minus 4. Okay. So the zeros of this function, I've got x squared equals 0. And so x equals 0 has a multiplicity of 2. Okay. So that means it's going to bump it at zero and then it's going to change direction. So we don't know if it's coming from the top or the bottom, but it's not going to cross at zero. It's just going to touch it and then change direction. Then we have x plus four equals zero and x minus four equals zero. So we have x equals negative four <coughs> and x equals four. So when we graph this, we know that we are going to cross at negative four and four. Each of these have a multiplicity of one. So that means we are crossing at those, okay? So here is one, two, three, four. Okay, so we are gonna cross at negative four, and we're gonna cross at positive four, and at zero, we are touching and changing directions. That's all we're doing. Now, we also know that my graph is going to look like this. So with that information, we are able to sketch what our graph looks like. Because it goes down, we know it's going to be going straight down. We're going to go up. We don't know how far up it goes. We're going to go to zero and we are going to bump it. And then we go back down. Okay, and we are touching and changing direction at zero because the multiplicity of zero is two. And we cross at negative four and positive four because 
the multiplicity of each one of those is one. Okay, it looks like now we are doing some long division, or not long division, um, synthetic division. So when we're doing synthetic division, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our x plus two and we're gonna put it in our box over here. Now, x plus two is our factor, so the solution that we're gonna use is negative two. Then I am gonna take the coefficients of all of these. So I have one, I have eight, I have 19, and I have 14. They are all positive, okay? All of those coefficients are positive. So now, I'm just gonna do my synthetic division. I bring my one down. I say negative two times one is negative two. Eight minus two, or eight plus negative two is six. Negative two times six is negative 12. 19 minus 12 is seven. Negative two times seven is negative 14, and that gives me zero. So what this is saying is that because I have a remainder of zero, because I have a remainder of zero, that means that x plus two is a factor. It also means that negative two is a solution to this. So um, my actual answer to this is I'm gonna put the x squared back in. One, six, and seven are my coefficients. So this is one x squared plus six x plus seven, because the zero is my remainder, and that one on the end is always my remainder. This right here is my constant. It's my number without a variable. This is my linear, which is x to the first power, and this is my quadratic, which is x to the second. Okay, and then if we went again, if we had another number, then that would be my cubic, but we, we don't. So my final answer to this is x squared plus 6x plus 7. That is what happens when I do synthetic division. Now, if the problem had said find all the zeros, then you could just um, factor this and, and keep going, and you could identify all your zeros. But it's just asking us to divide, so we don't have to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, number 17 says use the rational root theorem to find all rational zeros. Um, when I looked at this one, I saw that it actually could be factored. Um, and so some students may choose to do that. They may choose to factor it. And you can just say x squared, um, x plus 3. And then we can take a negative 1 out. And we get x plus 3. Whoops, sorry about that. Um, so then we would have x plus 3, um, x squared minus 1. Uh, we can factor x squared minus 1. So I have x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 1. Okay? So then I have x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 1. So, and, and that's your answer. Your answers are 1, negative 1, whoops, Okay, hold on a second. This is, let me fix this right here. So I've got x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, because this, x squared minus 1, that's difference of perfect squares. Okay, so x plus 1 times x minus 1. And so our zeros are 1, negative 1, and negative 3. Those are our zeros. Once you use the rational root theorem, um, so what that means is, we would take this negative 3 and we would list all the factors of negative 3, okay? There's not a ton. There's positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 3. And so we have to determine which ones of those are solutions to this. So I'm going to start with positive 1 um, just to see if it's a solution. Now we already know it's a solution, but this is how you would use the, ra the um, rational root theorem to determine that. Um, so I've got 1, 3, negative 1, and negative 3. Okay, I bring down my 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 1 and 4 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. And I get a 0. So that means that 1 is a solution. We know that 1 works. 
um, but we've already got that over here. Now that we have the first factor using synthetic division, um, then I could factor the rest of it. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, that factors to x plus 3 um, times x plus 1. So my solutions to this then, if x plus 3 is a factor, x equals negative 3 is the solution. If x plus 1 is a factor, then x equals negative 1 is a solution. So um, your final answer here is negative 3, negative 1, and 1. Um, that's just showing you two different ways that you can get to that answer. Okay, number 18. 18 has us working with some negative numbers, or some negative square roots, I'm sorry, some negative square roots. So, my first one is I've got negative, or square root of negative 12 times square root of negative 3. Before we can do anything, we've got to pull that i out, okay? So, the square root of negative 12 is the same thing as i on the square root of 12, and we are multiplying that times i on the square root of 3. So before you do anything else, you've got to pull that i out. Now i times i is i squared, and we'll deal with that in just a second. 12 times 3 is 36, and we actually um, can do the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6, so I have i squared times 6. And I just want to remind you that i squared is negative 1, so I have negative 1 times 6, and so my final answer here is negative 6. Okay. Um, now for our next one, we've got 4i plus 3 times 6i plus 7. So we are going to FOIL this. We're going to FOIL it. Okay. So I've got 4i times 6i. That is going to give me 24 i squared. Now, I don't want to deal with that i squared just yet, okay? We'll deal with it a little bit later. Then I have 4i plus 7, or times 7, 4i times 7, um, and that's going to give me 21, 28i. Then I have 3 times 6i, and that's going to give me 18i. Then I have 3 times 7, and that's going to give me 21. So I've got 24i squared plus 46i plus 21. But we're not done. We're not done. We need to deal with that i squared. So this i squared is 24 times negative 1. Okay, 24 times negative 1 is going to be negative 24. And we have two more things that we can combine. We can combine negative 24 and positive 21. So that's negative 3 plus 46i. And that is my final answer. That's a negative right there. I want to make sure you guys know that's a negative. So it is negative 3 plus 46i. Okay. The last one sometimes can be confusing because students aren't sure what it's asking to simplify. Um, for something to be completely simplified, you cannot have a square root in the denominator and you can't have i in the denominator. So we have to multiply this by its conjugate. And so if I multiply the bottom times its conjugate, okay, and the conjugate of 2 plus i is 2 minus i, if I multiply the bottom times 2 minus i, then I have to multiply the top times 2 minus i. Okay, so um, the top is 8 times 2, which is 16, 8 times negative i. Okay, the bottom is going to be the difference of perfect squares. So let me just do this off to the side. So I have 2 plus i times 2 minus i. 2 plus i times 2 minus i. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times minus i is minus 2i. i times 2 is plus 2i. Those are going to cancel out, and that's exactly what we want to happen. We want those two to cancel out. Okay? So we are left with 4 minus 
i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So then these get added together, and I am left with 5 in the denominator. So my answer to this is 16 minus 8i over 5. Some people like to write that as 16 over 5 minus 8 over 5i. And either way is acceptable. Either way is acceptable. Okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. What? We are on number 19. Okay. Find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x to the third plus 6x squared plus 5x. So, my vertical asymptotes are where my graph is undefined. Okay? My vertical asymptotes are where my graph is undefined. So, I am going to look at my denominator. So, I've got x to the third plus 6x squared plus 5x. And I am going to factor this. So, I have x, taking an x out, then I'm left with x squared plus 6x plus 5. I can keep going. That factors. I'm looking for two numbers multiplied together that give me 5 and added together give me 6. Okay, so because I'm looking at my denominator, none of that can equal 0. So any of any values that make my denominator 0, I have to throw out. So x cannot be 0, x cannot be negative 5, and x cannot be negative 1. Those are my vertical asymptotes. Okay, those are my vertical asymptotes. Right here. Now my horizontal asymptotes are the relationship between the numerator and the denominator. Okay, um, the relationships between the numerator and the denominator. I have x squared in the numerator and I have x to the third in the denominator. Okay, so we are going to have a relationship where our vertical asymptote is y equals 0. And that's because the degree of my numerator is 1 less than the degree of my denominator. Okay, that's how we determine these. Now, um, I do want to mention something else to you. Um, this isn't something you'll see on your final. We saw it probably on our project. Um, if I were to factor x squared minus 1, that would be x plus 1 and x minus 1, because that's difference of perfect squares. Then my denominator is x, x plus 5, and x plus 1. Um, so this x plus 1 and x plus 1, they cancel out, which then means that this would not be a vertical asymptote. So your only vertical asymptotes are x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. Um, and then at x equals negative 1, you'd have a little hole in the graph. You'd have like an open circle. Um, we didn't talk a ton about that this semester, but just wanted to go back and just briefly mention that because your answer key deals with that. Um, and the, the parts on your final exam, you know, we're not graphing or doing much with rational functions because we did so much of them on your, with, with them on your project. But I wanted to mention why x equals negative 1 is not on your answer key. Okay, number 20. We are writing log base 8 of b equals a as an exponent. So it's always important to be able to go back and forth. So our base stays the same. Our base is 8. We are raising 8 to the a power. And that equals b. Okay. We also need to be able to go from an exponent to a log. This one has e, and anytime we have e, we're going to use natural log. Now, the natural log, you don't have to write the base down. Okay. The natural log assumes that you've got the base e. It's just a given. So base e of m 
is raised to the k power, okay? But this right here, this log base a, e, I'm sorry, log base e is written just as natural log. Natural log is used so much that it has its own log. And so that is called your natural log. And so the way that you would write that is the natural log of m equals k. Okay, let's solve some equations. So here I've got 7 times 4 to the x power equals 56. This is number 21, and, and we are solving these. 7 times 4 to the x power equals 56. Um, the first thing that we're going to do right here is we're going to divide. Okay, so I'm left with 4 to the x power equals 8. Okay, now I can rewrite... 4 as 2 squared, and then 2 squared is being raised to the 8 x power. I can rewrite 8 as 2 to the 3rd. So then what happens is I get 2 to the 2x equals 2 to the 3. If our bases are the same on an exponent, then I can... Um, drop the base and my exponents are the same. So I have 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 over 2. Okay. For our next one, we have 3 log of 5x equals 6. So this is 3 times the log of 5x equals 6. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Okay, then I'm left with log of 5x equals 2. Okay, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, in order to solve this, I am going to rewrite this as an exponent. So when there is no base right here, there is a base of 10 that's assumed. So I have 10 to the second power equals 5x. 10 to the second power is 100. Okay, and if I get 100 equals 5x, I divide both sides by 5. So my x value is 20. Okay. Number part 3 of number 21. I have 7 to the x power equals 9. Um, I can't um, rewrite 9 as a 7 or 7 to some power. Um, I can't rewrite 7 as 9 to some power or 3 to some power. I could write 9 as 3 squared, but that doesn't get me anywhere. So the way that I solve this is I have to take the log of both sides. So I have log of 7 to the x power equals the log of 9. Okay, the power property allows me to take that x, or the power rule allows me to take that x and put it in front of the log. So I have x times log of 7 equals log of 9. Okay, so my next step is to divide both sides by log of 7. Okay, now, so your answer to this is x equals log of 9 over log of 7. Now, that is slightly different than what is in your answer key, um, and that's because this is the change of base formula, so you could simplify that. What I want us to do is I want us to go ahead and do the log of 9 divided by the log of 7. We're going to do that log of 9 divided by the log of 7. And when we do that, we get x equals 1.129. Okay, so that is our value of x. Now, the way that we can check that is we can do 7 to the 1.129 power and see if we get something pretty close to 9. 
um, and we will. That's, that's kind of how we check it. So we do 7 raised to the power of 1.129. When you do that, you get 8.997. Okay, so that is our answer right there. Now, if you left it like this, then you're completely fine. You can leave it like this, or you can write it like that. Either way. Okay, the last one is um, systems of equations. Systems of equations. Uh, so we need to, to figure out how to solve this. And I'm going to solve using elimination. You can solve by the method of your choice. We got 3x plus 4y equals 6. Um, then x plus 5y equals 13. Now, it would be reasonable to solve this by substitution. Um, you certainly could. I'm not going to, but you definitely could. So I have 3x plus 4y equals 6. Then I have negative 3x uh, minus 15y equals negative 39. Yes, negative 39. Okay. Um, my threes, my three x and my negative three x cancel. Then I'm left with negative eleven y equals negative thirty three. I divide both sides by negative eleven, and so I get y equals three. Okay. Now I need to go back and find out what my x is. So I have three times three. So I'm just plugging three into this equation here. Oh, actually. I am plugging 3 in for my y, not my x. So it's 3x plus 4 times 3, because my y value is 3. So I have 3x plus 12 equals 6. 3x is going to equal negative 6 when I subtract 12 from both sides. Then I divide by 3 and I'm left with x equals negative 2. Okay, and that, so our answer to this then is negative 2, positive 3. And if you plug both of those back in, um, you would get true statements for each one of them. Now, um, two things that I want to make sure that you know how to do. Um, you are going to have one on your test that you have to solve using the quadratic formula. Okay, um, so you do need to be able to solve um, a problem using the quadratic formula. Okay, and you'll be given that. It's negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The other thing that I want you to make sure you know how to do, if you get something that looks like 2x squared minus 5. 2x squared minus 5. Okay. As a factor. Let's say these are your two factors right here. Okay. After you factored something, you get 2x squared minus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. You still have to do 2x squared minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. So you've got x equals negative 1. But you bring that 5 over, you've got 2x squared equals 5, and x squared equals 5 over 2. You can still solve this. So your answer is going to be x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so I just want to make sure you know how to do this right here. We've done it, and it was on your tests and stuff, but I want to make sure you know how to do that for your final exam. Okay, so be sure, just jog your memory about this, that um, then the answer to this one would be x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, and then negative 1 would also be your answer. Okay, um, our final is on Thursday, so please let me know if you need anything, and I have office hours, office hours are posted, and so you can let me know what I can do to help. Thanks, have a good day.